Welcome to the Free Dive Cafe, episode 154 with Alenka Artnik. You know, the last time that you were on the podcast, that was episode 57. I was just uh, listening to it earlier today. Do you know that was five years ago? Yeah, I can imagine. That's crazy. It's yeah. crazy for me to think that's five years, that I've been doing this for five years, more than five years, seven years. Absolutely insane. Um, yeah, since since that time, uh, you know, you had you had a couple of world records at that time. Since that time, you have become the absolute deepest free diving uh woman in the world um so congratulations on uh i know that's not the point really but uh congratulations on on the uh the depths that you you reached um thank you uh so it's been quite a while so let's catch up um with uh, w what you've been doing in the interim, but also uh, because it's been such a long time, we can also revisit a little bit some of the uh, the, the topics about training and things like that that uh, perhaps have changed over the years or perhaps not. Um, okay, so what brings you to Dahab this time? Well, training, so obviously, yeah, it's the beginning. No, it's not the beginning, but let's say uh, I started my depth preparations and... Um, so yeah, basically I need the depth and it's also very, it's practical for me because I'm, you know, living uh, in Geneva and then, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very practical to mm -hmm. come to Dahab. Uh, last year I actually came to Dahab after seven years. I had kind of like a seven year break. It was also, this is the place where I started free diving, depth free diving and where everything started anyway. So it, it was interesting that I took, it took me like seven years to come back here and, um, I kind of, uh, you know, broke the ice and uh, now it looks like I'm going to be coming here more often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to say uh, quite a lot of things has changed since and yeah. I really like yeah. it. I like the vibe here. Yeah. It's it's really cool. Yeah, yeah I was going to ask you like how it has changed for you and how you perceive how it's changed. Like what's what's different about it now? I would say the main difference. Well, there are some other it's kind of like it's more mixed. Uh, the you know, I see this. What's the name? Those, those, those uh, IT nomads. These guys uh, working Digital remotely. Digital nomads. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I see those guys and more kind of like youngsters from Cairo, and it's more mixed everything. So this is this is, is nice. It's not only about you know free diving, and that's that's yeah. good. It's a bit more mixed, but also yeah, there are many more. You know, like uh, food is super important, uh, very very important part of the the whole process. So there are many more options, and uh, yeah, that's that's. Kind of like a yeah. huge bonus let's yeah. say yeah i know a lot of people are sad about the loss of the simple life and the the way it used to be and uh you know there's there's more buildings and more businesses and more cafes and more restaurants and more shops and more people but uh, uh this is also part of what makes it nice here in dahab is that we step out out into the water and you know a couple of hundred meters from the shore we have the depth but also we can come straight back into the restaurant and we can have a good meal and we can mm -hmm. have a good coffee and we have options we can have brownie there and we have pasta there and curry there and, and this and yeah, that so absolutely yeah. but i think you know the this the the, the spirit of the of dahab is still here yes it's still dahab yes. is still dahab you know when you come here the, the smell of the goats <laughs> never <laughs> left you know it's still here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um and uh Congratulations on becoming a married woman. Thank you. Um, <laughs> shout out to uh, Florian, mm -hmm. your uh, husband, who's yeah. back in uh, Switzerland right now in Geneva. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's a, obviously one big change that's, uh, that's happened in the last few years. Um, what do you think of this place? You mean your My new place. center? Yes. I love it, man. Yeah. It's the best. Look at the location you have yeah. here. I, you, the showers are finished now. You didn't get the chance I to didn't. see them, but um, yeah. Super cool. No, super, yeah. super, super nice. Very yeah. cool place. Yeah. yeah so um, we we would like to be sitting up on the on the uh, balcony right now, overlooking the water. But uh, I was saying to Alenka, five days in the year, the south wind blows, and this is one of the days. So uh, we're, we're sitting down here in the in the classroom area now. So it's, it's a very special day. 
I guess. Yes, I mean it's uh, right. it's it's an acknowledgement from the universe that you are here to, uh, to have <laughs> sure. this conversation. Yes, sure. Sure. Um, give us a little uh, brief rundown of the highlights of the last uh, five years, and maybe some of the lowlights as well. Oh my God, the last mm -hmm. five years! I really need to think about mm -hmm. that. That's like, oh, I was not thinking about that. You know, I'm just like keep on going mm -hmm, mm -hmm. basically you said it just now i'm a married woman that's mm -hmm. like uh, probably the biggest mm -hmm. uh, the biggest change in my in my personal life you also said before i made a couple of world records in between I, obviously the I, i implemented some new trainings um but uh, i don't know you know man i'm just living i try to be in the in the present uh, as much as possible being in the flow and uh seeing well, let's see what's gonna happen tomorrow mm -hmm. i'm not even really thinking so much about the past eh? if you have a specific question though i can ask it to you okay okay specific question um we'll 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 discuss the the bigger dives the deeper dives mm -hmm. like coming into the 120s is like uh you know it's yeah. a huge thing that i think and i don't know about you but in some sense and not, lo not a lot of people were thinking about those numbers five years ago even you know maybe in a fantastical kind of way but it didn't seem uh, just within reach as, yeah. as now it's it's becoming normal it's becoming normal to dive over 100 meters for a lot of people it's mm -hmm. um you know it's like 100 is the new 80 or maybe even the new 70 you know it's yeah. um, it's becoming like that it's, it's changed a lot and that's, that's good true. you know for the sport that um people are realizing that they're capable of much more than they thought they were and everybody is capable of uh, attaining um, uh, very deep dives if they if they train in the right way and approach it in the right yeah. way. Uh, there's also been uh, a lot of negative energy running around the free diving community in the last uh, few years. I, kn I know we had a long discussion about this the other day there and uh, I suggested that probably we're not going to talk about it, but I think it would be uh, wouldn't be right to not raise the subject of the the issues uh, surrounding doping and the sport and uh, if you feel if you feel comfortable uh, talking about it well and how it's affected you i it, know that it's, it yeah. really it affected me yeah, yeah, quite yeah. a lot uh, it, it's, it's a very heavy topic yeah you know um let's let's uh let's start from saying that you know you you are one of the people who uh believes that there is doping in the highest levels of the sport and uh it's affected you to the point where you know, you may have had to change your plans and um, and and the the competitions that you would attend and and things like that. Um, yeah, uh, let me let me also add that I'm one of those people who, until recently, didn't believe there was doping in our sport. Yeah, yeah. Um, I always heard the rumors, but I never really believed them. You know, because I thought, well, you know, there are tests; they are doing doping tests. So how can you? You know how can you dope yourself? You know what what is the doping here? You know, so I, I I honestly I was thinking you know could be, you know the fact could be jealousy could be the fact that some people couldn't uh, couldn't accept that could be just uh, rumors gossip you know, and um, I was I was really really disappointed uh, when I find out that. There is there is something about it that the, the doping is existing in our sport and people you know obviously doesn't have as maybe how how to say that maybe moral uh, morality to not to do it and even in our sport you know and um, of course they took it personally because free diving is obviously for me it's just much more than just a sport you know it's my life so obviously I took it very very personal and it's and that's why it it. it affected me greatly yeah yeah i think um one of the things that i think i also had this uh, feeling this innocence about uh free diving that it would be you know it, it wouldn't exist in the sport in the beginning and then the, maybe there was very very few people who were in, of course s some people have already been caught in free diving we know mm -hmm. we know that people have been caught banned but um even though i followed for years performance enhancing drug use in other sports like even f I, I, as entertainment I like to watch the bodybuilding stuff you know and like how crazy people get with using drugs there and uh, in uh, CrossFit or triathlon or swimming or whatever it is and in fact uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that 
there is high level there's doping at h the high level of sport in every single sport and way way more than you would think i was looking at something yesterday it was uh maybe i could even put it up on the screen here in the video but it was a list of the the top 20 100 meter dash times and uh with all the names crossed off of all the the athletes who had been retroactively uh popped for performance enhancing drug use and basically the only person left on the the list was usain bolt wow. you know, and everyone else had been mm -hmm. had been busted mm -hmm. something like 400 plus Ethi uh kenyan runners um uh, caught uh, using drugs um, and that's just like the tip of the iceberg so uh, as ours you know as we as we move into these greater depths and as the sport becomes more sporty in a sense there's an inevitability to yeah. the fact that some people are not sharing the same mindset and the same philosophy towards freediving that we are that gave us that innocence in the first place and there will be there will be people who come in uh, cheating uh, for one reason or another in yeah. sport yeah mm -hmm. I, i'm hearing quite often they say that you know the sport is developing which it is and with that doping yeah. unfortunately comes yeah I, I i don't like it though when people say it, they, they, they sometimes they say it in a way that it sounds like ah mm -hmm. the sport is developing so mm -hmm. it's like it's normal it's natural yeah, that exactly. we have doping in the sport yeah. but but like almost like an alibi yeah, yeah 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 and and but it, it's 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 n it's not the it, but free diving is such a small sport with mm -hmm. such a small community and of course we we know all these people we we all know each other yeah. to one extent we know we're we're only one person removed from anyone else in the sport yeah. uh, and obviously and, yeah. uh, and, and free diving as i said before now bef i don't think it's only for me I, I, not only a sport but it's like really a way a lifestyle no we yeah. always say free diving is a way it's, it's, a, it's a lifestyle and i think there are a lot of people that free diving actually represents for them as well that mm -hmm. it's not only a sport so already because of that it's different if you had to say some words to people who may be considering using performance enhancing drugs uh, in free diving in order to get deeper like coming from your heart what would you say to them that's it's very interesting because i would say that like like everything in life right it's it's not only about doping or let's say cheating curves or instant results it's not only about doping and it's not only about sport i would i think it's probably in general in sport uh, in, in life uh, like, you know, aiming for this absolute result without any real, I would say, purpose or, you know, just like blindly going for the result, no matter what is the, the maybe the, what, what are the side effects, um, it's, it's just not worth it. It's not worth it because at the end of the day, you know, you are alone with yourself and I highly doubt that your subconscious and your inner self are okay with that. So, you know, you can manipulate yourself, you can manipulate the whole community, the whole world if you want. At the end of the day, this will not make you feel better. Like you're just like digging a, a bigger hole to yourself. And it doesn't go just for this matter, it's in general, you know. And uh, that's why I think um, I always I always communicate this in free diving, even before this affair and this shit came out. Uh, you know about the approach in free diving. You know that we should have like a bigger purpose I in everything in life. You know um, a purpose that is basically motivating us to to keep on developing, to keep on going, and. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, I think it's 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 a bit sad because anyway, when you see the system is kind of working like that, everybody is kind of like working for themselves. It's it's a very selfish community. It's a very selfish society, and um, you know. And then it's very interesting to see the level of depression and anxiety just like growing. And I think it's not a coincidence, you know, that these these two things are happening simultaneously. And uh, yeah, so I would say, you know, like it's it's I, I really think I really believe it's really really not worth it. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. I I can imagine that maybe they just see now this this result, this this I don't know this this 
uh, this uh, beautiful, we call it cellophane, you know, um, but um, it's, it's very tricky and it will come with a very high cost and you will have to pay for it. Mm. And uh, just to not dwell too long on this topic because yeah. we're trying to have a nice time here. Yeah, but um, <laughs> and we did it already too, <laughs> too, too much. So yeah. my God, let's move forward. Yeah, eh? some whiskey. Um, but uh, just one last thing on that is like you know, from a practical point of view, what is necessary from the side of the free diving organizations and the organizers to um, better combat um, and to catch people who do decide to use PEDs? Yeah, well, the thing is, because the sport is so, uh, first of all, it's new and it's specific. So it gets a bit more complicated. Um, the thing is that the, the performance enhancing drugs that are, let's say, helping freedivers free on freediving, uh, they are, you know, not at all helping other sports. So there is this list of pads, bad list, it's it's very general. It's not uh, let's say uh, fitted or custom made for freediving, and that's the first problem. And also, it's very complicated to put these drugs on the list. It's a very complicating process. Um, so, from what I know, the the main organization, CIMAS, uh, the organization, they try to to they work with Vada. They try to put these drugs. Uh, obviously, they need to do a lot of scientific uh, researches about it, which uh, which actu actually drugs are helping or are performance enhancing drugs for freediving. So, as I said, it's a very long uh, procedure. Uh, meanwhile, we can just hope that people will uh, choose to behave with dignity. Um, but yeah, that that probably would be the first thing to do. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously, uh, there should be more testing, more controls. I hope for, you know, it's called this blood passport. So they would also make like tests of the blood, not only urine. Mm -hmm. uh, during the whole year, um, that would probably help a little bit, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm not an expert in this, mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. the, yeah, the organization is the one that uh, should do anything, everything that it's that it's necessary mm -hmm. to protect the sport mm -hmm. and us athletes at the end of the day, no? Because it goes for it's that's the topic, that's the reason to protect us. Mm -hmm. Well, let's hope for the best, and uh, I guess also uh, coming back to the size of the sport and the the smallness of our yeah. community is that it's. Uh, at least, you, you, if you are cheating, you can't really hide so so well uh, when you know there are so many eyes on you and people. You know, it's not like you can disappear into the crowd um, in a bigger sport like running or yeah. cycling or something like that. So, um, and it's really not worth it. No, it's, it's not. not worth it. No. Um, okay, moving on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, <coughs> How would you say? your w what what has changed most in your approach to training for free diving in the last five years uh, has much changed i was just listening to your interview and uh, i was uh, uh, you know t you were already working with Taya back uh -huh. then you had mm -hmm. just started working with Taya. Mm -hmm. Taya who uh kosh kosh Taya koshniak. koshniak who's yeah. uh, uh alenka strength and conditioning coach is also here in uh dahab and is she coming tomorrow she has today the the presentation. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, it should be, will she be diving tomorrow? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Then yeah, 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 There yeah, will yeah. be some pictures of her up on the screen right now. I'll be there tomorrow. Take some pictures cool. and uh, and um, yeah. we'll get some pictures of Taya, who's been, I guess, instrumental in developing your capacity over the last few years. But um, what has changed the most, if anything? Well, I'm thinking now, when was the last time, as you said, like five years ago. So I guess this is when we started maybe with Taya working yeah, together. It was about the same time. Yeah, Yeah, it was, it was, you know, it was a slow start. We just kind of got to know each other and we were, we had some, some talks and, and so on. And then this relationship kind of during the years developed. Um, at that time, I was aware that I need to work on this aspect, uh, the aspect of technique, because my technique was really not good, and it was something I, you know, I didn't want, I kind of didn't want to work on it because it was the annoying part of freediving, and I didn't like it, and um, I didn't have any knowledge. In other things, I could kind of learn by myself, but 
in this aspect aspect I didn't have any knowledge and it was really as I said it was not uh, something I was enjoying so much so yeah I needed the help and at the same time she approached to me and then uh, yeah this is how our relationship basically started and during these years you know you can see the obviously the the physical uh, development um, that basically reflects directly into the to better technique and uh, I would say that was uh, a big a big change a big development yeah mm. yeah and, and it's I think it's important to note as well like that's five years that's half a decade you know th things don't just happen overnight when you implement a new a new training protocol or get a new coach or mm -hmm. take a different approach you know like it's uh yeah. and i think that's an important lesson also for also reflecting back on the last topic a little bit as well is that free diving is a sport that when you try to push and try to go too fast and mm -hmm. try to go too deep too quickly it pushes back on you uh, yeah, quite yeah. strongly absolutely i mean it's a it's a really long process mm -hmm. you know let's mm -hmm. say what i'm capable to do today with her in the gym there's no way i was able to do that right. you know years mm -hmm. ago uh, or the training i'm doing today in the pool mm -hmm. or all the volume and the intensity that i'm doing today mm -hmm. in the past i was not able to do that yeah. so you need time in order to be able to actually train like that yeah, yeah. that's something super super important and then you know again free diving is such a specific sport and uh, you really need to be careful of your nerve system right mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. trigger it a little bit too much a little too easily yeah and uh, that's something you really need to be careful yes. and uh you know there are no magic um remedies magic uh recipes mm -hmm. uh magic ways fast ways there aren't like yep. in life you know if you want to if you really wish to 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 choose something you need to put all your heart into it and maybe it's even better if you don't even expect an outcome and you just like put every single day the best you can into whatever you're doing and uh, hope for the best basically not expecting but when we first spoke um, you we discussed your background in Slovenia and how you had done uh, a lot of pool training um, when you first started free diving. Is pool training still something that you consider to be essential and super important for your yeah. for your training? Absolutely. I mean, come on, we are free divers, right? This is our element. So I'm a bit. Uh, I've been a bit. Uh, <laughs> mm, um, let's say surprised how much uh, the gym is uh, getting very important mm -hmm. lately right it's like it's, it's getting like a special renome in our sport mm -hmm. which obviously it, it is very important right mm -hmm. but let's go one step after another right and let's 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 work on the mm -hmm. most important element which is water mm -hmm. and then maybe you know improve and also do some other exercises like gym but i really think uh, we should all spend as much time in the water as possible because like you know anyway uh, the, the the gym will not give you the i don't know the 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 sensitivity for the water which in free diving is so crucial you know at the end of the day if you want to be efficient in the water you have to spend time in the pool you have to do kilometers and kilometers years and years um this is this is the only way i think to improve without any cheating curves you're, you're breaking a lot of hearts right now you know living in dahab it's hilarious because here i think maybe more than any other place in the world except maybe pang lao but here it's like the highest concentration of aspiring deep free divers in the world and trying to get a pool buddy is almost impossible here yeah. you know it's like it's uh it's still it's still it's a mission so hard, i remember know? you know in the past but this is very interesting i will tell you because in the past when i was here my first season when i was here uh, and I was already, you know, doing a lot of uh, pool training. I would be the only one doing pool training, especially during the winter time. And that was really hard, you know, like I really couldn't find a training mm -hmm. buddy. But today, uh, there are more and more because it's kind of hard to find a line here. You know, we are very limited uh, with pools in Dahab. So we have uh, Brian's pool and Catherine's pool. And uh, you really need to reserve it in advance because yeah. more and more people are aware, I guess, that it's very important part of training. Yeah, yeah but, but also a lot of people are coaching and teaching as well. And, uh, and that also limits the availability of the pool. But I, I, sure. I, I love the Canyon pool personally. I think it's yeah. an amazing facility there. And uh, honestly, I think 
think you can suck up the little bit of uh, colder water temperature uh, during the colder months as well and, and still get a lot of good training and in, in the pool uh, mm -hmm. if you can find a buddy yeah. um, so so uh, yeah a lot of water a mm -hmm. lot of water mm -hmm. as much as possible mm -hmm. even if it's uh well you know if you don't like uh so much the pool training i mean as, as as long as you can spend time in the water like in the sea uh, you can do amazing uh, training obviously in the depth in the sea not really deep i'm not saying about mm -hmm. deep diving mm -hmm. but like you can do amazing training uh in the depth this is basically still my main training mm -hmm. my main training is mm -hmm. depth training so what I'm really interested in right now is you know, how how do, how do you periodize the lead up to a competition and how how many times would you go through a cycle in a year would you do twice or three times could you do three times well I do have uh, basically two peaks two competitions and winter time is my base period and it's like you know a typical base period when you do basically everything you train your strength you also do of course uh, cardio because you do a lot of technique and mm -hmm. swimming as uh, I mentioned what do you before. use for cardio you in the water cardio would be the water uh -huh. cardio would be mm -hmm. mainly the water and also i like to do some trekking mm -hmm. uh, i have some really nice uh, mm -hmm. mountains there around where yeah, i live bad in switzerland yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Yeah. so also in, in france because we we live on the border and yeah it's a it's a really cool uh, it's a really cool way to, to to do some sport you know it's also for me it's not just like doing sport but it's something i really enjoy but in the same time I'm also training my my physical overall mm -hmm, shape you mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't really enjoy I don't really enjoy running I'm not I think I don't, I'm not a runner I'm mm -hmm. not made for running but I do like to swim mm -hmm. so swimming would be let's say uh, maybe my cardio mm -hmm. uh, but it's never just like I don't do it for the sake of cardio obviously you want to feel good no uh, but I do it more for the, the the strength mm. and uh, the technique mm. which is it's super amazing important. recovery as well right if you're swimming and you're doing gym at the same time like getting the blood flow and having the, the zero impact of uh, swimming I think is really good for recovery as well yeah yeah I yeah. guess also yeah when you when you do a lot of gym let's say in this period I do more gym than usual then for sure swimming helps you to be to keeps you softer let's say because mm -hmm. In Fridami, you don't want to get stiff, right? Yeah, so yeah. It, it's good to have this element of water yeah. present. And that's why I keep saying, you know, pool should be, water should be present mm -hmm. all year long as much as possible. Uh, then let's say this is, you know, first of all, I don't have like a strict periodization. Uh, let, let's say I try, I d obviously I have like per month and I have a competition that I am like aiming for. I'm trying to pick my best shape for this competition. But then in between, I always kind of like change a little bit. I also every year I implement some new methods because free diving is still such a new sport and you know you have to you have to experiment sometimes things otherwise you never move forward right um so but yeah i have the the general let's say plan and uh, then i am I, I see from from weeks to weeks uh if i need to change something uh let's say now in this period um when i started to do depth training as well it's usually in, in the very similar period, like around February, I would start my depth training as well. I really like to train like that. I've been always training like that. That means that I do a lot of depth training, not deep diving. Um, I like to uh, I like to say that because um, I think it's important to not to do too too much in th in, in terms of deep diving. Um, you can very easily take you know a couple of months off from deep diving and you can do amazing training with uh, really not not that, that deep you know like I do a lot of training around 60 70 meters and they're really good training you know it's a very good training especially when you do it with small fins for example mm -hmm. I like to do that this is my my favorite um, drill I would say uh, but being present in the sea uh, with the with the depth with the pressure I think is really beneficial I mean it it only makes sense, right? I mean, uh, it's like uh, free diving is uh, not any different than other sports. And if you're a swimmer, you are swimming two times per day, every day, 20 years. So free diving is not any different. Obviously, you have to be careful of the nerve system, as yeah, I said before, yeah. and not overtrain. It's very specific what's happening with our body during the dive. So you need to be smart. You need to listen to yourself. You need to know what you're doing. 
um, if you don't have these experiences, you need to ask for help, you need to ask for a coach, you need to look for that if you really have a plan to improve. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, you know, in this in this period for the next few months, it's going to be a lot of volume, a lot of intensity. I'm going to be doing, uh, as I said, depth training, uh, which means repetitions. So not deep diving, repetitions, small things likely, and um, uh, gym training, uh, still uh, a lot of pool training, dynamic, uh, technique. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of volume, a lot of intensity for the next uh, few months, and then you know, come closer to the event. Uh, I'm gonna start doing more specific training, which means also the volume will be will be less lesser, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be more doing specific mm -hmm, trainings. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, how many times would you train strength at this time of year? So basically. Um, if my cycle, um, so I have kind of like, I still do that. Like, this is very interesting. I really like this, this the way how I trained in the past and I still do the same. So basically I would do three days training, day off, three days training, two days off, right? So it's basically a cycle of at the end, seven, eight, nine days. Uh, depends. Also, the the rest days, I also see uh, how I feel. Mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes when, I need when more. You, when you say three days training, day off, three days training, yeah, would be like so e each day would be one kind of workout. So it's like this. So in the morning, I do uh, either depth or dynamic training. Mm -hmm. So either like it would be in this in this season two depths and one dynamic in the morning. So basically. Uh, specific freediving trainings um, and then in the afternoon I would do strength training uh, so gym training and swimming technique a lot of pool training in the afternoon that would be the the um, let's say the the, the, the the three days so basically I have six trainings mm -hmm. in three days and then I have a rest yeah. and the rest and day I is a full rest day full rest yeah. full rest yeah. and then I repeat the same and then I take two days two but days this off. is not like secret you know? yeah, yeah. I, I change this when I feel or if yeah. I feel that I have mm -hmm. to change something yeah. okay so let's just uh, ask that one question again which is um, um, if you do something um, like uh, yoga nidra relaxation uh -huh. um, uh, to to help you recover between sessions in the afternoon, sorry, if, sorry about that. <laughs> no we're just repeating the same question. Yeah, we're just doing this again. <laughs> it was so good the first time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see now, uh, it's 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 good that I don't have expectations to do the same reply. Yeah because then uh, the reply will not be as good no. so let's just well, i know it was good but i can i can't remember what i it know is, there so was a sentence <coughs> that we we liked it both but i already forgot about uh -huh, it so uh -huh. i will try yeah. to be in the flow okay to, okay let's flow again get, let's get, flow again to get yeah. the flow yeah. but you you were saying that um <clears throat> you know it's soup it's essential that the highest levels of any sport i guess that to 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 have a, a good recovery yeah. principle yeah. and also uh the other thing was that we also need to treat ourselves as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I think uh, maybe in freediving even more because we're triggering our nerve system so much, you know. So sometimes, sometimes when I see people that are really like so much committed and they're training so much, but then they feel guilty when they, uh, I don't know, they would have a glass of wine, for example, or they would treat themselves a little bit. Uh, it's uh, it's very important to to have this this um, this balance in life and not to feel guilty guilty about it you know you need to reward yourself and not feel guilty about yeah. it you know I, i'm trying really really hard to stay away from alcohol at this point as i focus heavily on my training and now alenka artnik sitting here like the devil on my shoulder i know everything you're saying is is perfectly true but it's like oh a glass of wine is going to be okay okay yes yes sure like oh maybe that ice cream won't be so bad after all alenka says it's okay alenka says it's okay <laughs> of course i mean come on honestly no really we are restricting ourselves too much mm -hmm. you know when we like we we are expecting too much and um at the end of the day honestly we live once uh, so uh, yes yeah. 
and I think the the quote along was along along the lines of uh, if you're gonna do something, fucking enjoy it. Fucking enjoy yes. it. Do it properly. Yes. Right. But that that also makes me think of a point which is you have to have a certain maturity and a certain uh, a maturity to b- to approach things that way because what I do see here being mm-hmm. surrounded by people who want to train for free diving all the time mm-hmm. is, is the, they, they want to dive deep every day they go on diving blah 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 yeah, yeah. but at the same time they are they are not making the little sacrifices that maybe they need to make which is like okay if you're gonna have that much coffee or eat that much food at that restaurant or go to that many social gatherings and you know there there is an there is an element to to i I would say you need to have your lifestyle in place first a Mm -hmm. healthy lifestyle in place first yeah and and have that as the 80 90 percent of of the way that you live your life and then have space for treating yourself 10 percent of the time absolutely but if it's the other way around and you are like uh you're not sleeping properly, you're not resting yeah, yeah. properly, you're eating crap all the time, and then you think that by taking some fish oil every night, that's yeah. you compensating for it. it. It doesn't work like that. We yeah, do yeah. have to make some sacrifices. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, now this was coming from, from the perspective that, you know, you are disciplined and you're following yes, yes, a yes. healthy lifestyle or, you know, whatever is, you know, you're supposed to, to, to like commitment, I would say. You are fully committed. Uh, I'm talking about these these cases you know mm-hmm. when you are fully committed and disciplined um because you're aiming to achieve something it's important to sometimes uh you know cut a little bit and give yourself a little uh, treat and yes, uh, yes. not 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 be maybe maybe even too ambitious you know this this is sometimes it can be it, it's, it's a pain in the ass you mm-hmm. know yeah, uh, yeah. because you also you can see that even even if they achieve a great result, they they still they don't show happiness. So it's important eh, mm-hmm. to understand uh, these things and, mm-hmm. Ha- mm-hmm. as they say, you know, to to find happiness mm-hmm. uh, in in small things. This mm-hmm. is also something yeah. that um, I I I like to to say because I believe in that. You know, like let's say a big result, a world record will not make you happy if you don't enjoy little things in life. It just will not make mm-hmm. you happier. It's how it is. If you don't appreciate life and little things in life, trust me, you you will not have the capability to enjoy big things. S- just, do you continue to do strength work and pool work all the way up to a competition in some form? Yeah, reduced uh, form. Not so much the gym, mm. no. Would you do um, it, Would you do strength work or maintenance like once a week or something like that? Um, I think I would I would really skip the gym part. Maybe I would just do some mm-hmm. body weight. Uh, for the straight, what I do actually, and I really prefer that. And as I said before, I think it's more important to stay in the water and to be in the water as much as possible and to do movements that are specific and really simulating what we do. Uh, for example, a beautiful exercise for what I think it is uh, in that in that period would be doing some swimming, resistance swimming with this elastic uh, mm-hmm. band. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Yep. that's I think it's a, it's a it's a perfect uh, training, and you can do it also in breath hold if you want to. You know, suffer a little bit more mm-hmm. and be even Why more not? specific. Why not? Let's do it. <laughs> so I would I would suggest uh, something like that. Uh, this is what I do anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, but heavy lifting, I don't see really mm-hmm. the point. And mm-hmm. uh, also, it's very interesting because. It's not only about physical aspect. We talk all the time about the physical aspect. It's also this spiritual, the mental, the emotional aspect, uh, which is so important and reflects so strongly in the water. And this is something we maybe need to talk more. And for me, uh, specifically in, in that period, it's very interesting because it comes naturally for me it comes naturally that i don't want to lock myself in a gym because gym somehow for me it might sound funny but for me it represents this physical uh, super grounded uh, rational uh, aspect mm-hmm. and in that moment i don't want that in that moment what i want to what i wish for is rather uh, gracefulness and that I cannot find in the gym. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's why I am aware that I need to work on my strength, but then I'd rather do it in the in the water. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, in in that moment, 
as I said, for me, it comes naturally now that I am shifting and I can see that I am, let's say, aiming for more peace, for more quiet. Um, I don't want to, I don't spend so much time on my phone, like the scrolling kind of like just naturally finishes, you know, because it's, I am annoyed by it. And uh, yeah, it, it happens naturally mm -hmm. just before these big performances, mm -hmm. I guess. I know this is, you know, this is the, like before that I can do a lot of, you know, physical and um, I can, I can, you know, I don't need to be maybe so much uh, constantly aware of myself. And then in that moment, I really need to work on, on my, on my feelings. And um, this is also the period where I, uh, I go a bit deeper and uh, it's interesting because it goes deeper in you know, in the depths, but also deeper in myself. Mm. And in that, in that moment, before I start doing big depths, for me, it's really important that, I, that I'm clear, clear with myself, that I have a very clear purpose. If I don't have that, it's going to be very hard. Do you... You're saying this kind of just starts to happen organically and, you know, people talk a lot about meditation and I think that people sometimes don't understand that just the, the intention that you have is a kind of meditation in itself mm -hmm. and, you know, having clarity is uh, a form of meditation. Mm -hmm. But would you still use some formal meditation practice? Yeah, and it's interesting. I do meditation because I feel like I need it. Mm -hmm. I don't do it because it's supposed to help. Mm -hmm. I feel I need it. And this is also what I like in life in general, you know, not to do things because somebody tells you this is good, but, you know, do it because your inner self is telling you that you need this now. How, how important is uh, visualization for you for these big dives? Is that something you, you do or not so uh, much? Sometimes it's not crucial. I wouldn't say it's crucial. Mm -hmm. uh, I can do it or I do it when uh, maybe I'm mentally I'm not so... When I'm, let's say, struggling a little bit mentally, then maybe visualization can help me. But uh, when I'm in the right mindset, I don't really need it because mm -hmm. I do... At the end of the day, during the season, I do so many dives, so many repetitions that, you know, this kind of, this automatism, or how you say, this automatic pilot, mm -hmm. it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's it's building up mm -hmm. and then in the, in the competition mm -hmm. is there. And I don't need to additionally work on that. Mm -hmm. This is what mm -hmm. visualization is. But if I feel that my mind or my mental strength is maybe not so there, then it's a nice tool, I think, yeah. What about narcosis? At 120 plus meters, are you getting strong narcosis? Is it something that you've had to deal with or adapt to, or has it been less of an issue for you as it is for some people? That's very interesting. I, uh, narcosis is not something I am uh, struggling with. Mm. Um, I had it maybe, I don't know, two or three times. Really? But yeah. not during my deepest dives, yeah. not during my deepest dives. Um, I had it, let's say, um, that was uh, basically the previous world championship in Kash because it was the Mediterranean, it was in October, the water was super cold and I am not used to dive that deep. And I did like a huge PB in the Mediterranean um and i felt it and i felt it um in the during the training and but like i was very much aware you know it was almost like whoa that's that's it and i was like oh okay this is it this is, this is how it feels mm -hmm. so i had a full uh, control of it it was not crazy um but i am really not let's say a big fan of it because some people are kind of okay with it some people even like it i don't like it i don't want it mm. uh, but you know I kind of prepare myself and I knew that is specific uh, let's say territory and uh, I was not used to that cold and there obviously it looked like I was more prone for the narcosis because it was cold uh, but otherwise um, look um, uh, as I said my deepest dives uh, I remember everything mm. Like you can also see, I, I, it's just like, it, it's not just flawless. Uh, you see that these dives, 120, 122, they look quite flawless, but I was so, so much present. I mm -hmm. didn't do any mistakes mm -hmm. because my mind was so clear, mm -hmm. so there. 
Yeah, it's, it's so interesting that different people have a very different experience of narcosis. Uh, I mean, obviously the experience, like you, you, you said you, you don't like it, but also you don't have it very often, so it's not something that you get used to. Like for me, I get it very often, mm -hmm. so I get used to it. I wouldn't consider it to be negative, but it mm -hmm. is challenging that it brings an extra dimension to, to a, an extra challenge for staying, for staying present. It does. And, um, mm -hmm. But what's so fascinating is how different we are with that. I mean, like I'm getting narcosis. I think the first time I was just hitting 60 meters, I'm starting to get like very like undeniable narcosis symptoms. And some people are diving 100 plus meters. They yeah. never, they're not feeling something. You're diving 120 plus meters. You're not uh, feeling it's narcosis. It's and very interesting. And yeah. what is going on? Because, yeah. you know, you'd think that it would be, would be see some correlation between i thought that perhaps even like a history of drug use or like you know like psychedelic use or you know so, uh, like things like this could be but it seems like there's a, a different people from all different yeah. spheres of life are having a very different experience and uh yeah, yeah yeah i'd love to know more about that yeah yeah that that's very interesting uh yeah, we were always talking about uh, what could affect narcosis. Um, for me, uh, one factor, and I'm sure about it, is definitely the level of relaxation or stress, on the other hand. You know, I don't think we all have the same level of relaxation, and I don't, I don't think we necessarily all have the awareness of how really relaxed we can be underwater. Mm -hmm. Maybe this could also be connected with what I mentioned before, with having the purpose not being so basically not not having the purpose as uh, reaching the goal and only aiming for this goal and just like either if you you know you die in between but you want to reach this goal in my in my like i can i can hardly imagine that you can be relaxed when you when you want something that bad mm -hmm. um so this could also affect a little bit uh so as i said maybe having a like a bigger meaning a bigger purpose a different purpose not like just aiming for this stupid number but like comp surrendering to the to that level you know that uh, you really just belong there and maybe you know maybe you would have uh, less uh, strong narcosis i don't know or it could be just uh, the the metabolism or it could be uh, the packing or i don't know yeah. Who the hell knows? I mean, I mean but everything you said there, like, that's how I don't dive, you know. I never had any, I don't even have a yeah. dive computer, you know. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, uh, I really do feel that I'm, I'm extremely relaxed, mm -hmm. especially on my deeper dives. I think I'm more relaxed on my deeper dives. Maybe you're I, too relaxed then. Yeah, you I'm know, too relaxed. I've, yeah. gone, I've gone so far into relaxation that I've popped out the bottom into stress, uh, the, the underworld of stress, yes. Um, and that's why, by the way, I always say you need to have, uh, like, in order to be really, really max efficient, you need to have the balance between relaxation and focus. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying this is in your case, but in general, this is something super important. Well, well, you know, there, I would say that that physically and on in the level of the mind, the, yeah, it's possible to, for me to be extremely, extremely relaxed. But there's also there's a th sometimes there's th the mind has to be not just relaxed but clear it's mm -hmm. not the same thing yep. you know and it, and definitely maybe that clarity mm -hmm. is is has been lacking for me uh, clarity because a lot of what i've been going through has been challenging you know um, mm -hmm. on a deeper level i think this uh, is a really good point actually mm -hmm. maybe what i meant it was actually this mm -hmm. it's i mm -hmm. i uh, i hear you here I, yeah. uh, I because you can uh, you i can become relaxed almost like i'm so good at it like yeah. on a sort of like physical i can reduce my heart rate just by thinking about mm -hmm. it i can get my mind to sort of like stay in one kind of area but it's not the same as a kind of uh emptiness or clearness or yeah. Um, yeah something like this so mm -hmm. that's a that's an interesting topic for mm -hmm. sure and how it relates to narcotic very interesting maybe we'll know more one day yeah um, or maybe <coughs> not because not everything is meant to be revealed even better yes you know? we're getting we're learning too much about free diving look what's happening to the free diving <laughs> we're world thinking way too yeah, much that's, 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 that's the curse that's of the humanity undeniable. we just yes. think too much yes so um just a couple more questions here well you you never did the desert island questions last time 
The what? The de- <laughs> so you you d- you did your interview so long ago that you never did the desert island questions, which is kind of like a special section that I put into the podcast with some fun questions for the Patreon supporters and ah. um, make a little section. But we'll we'll do that uh, to okay. finish up. But um, cool. just the last couple of questions here. Um, like, what do you think the biggest f- for all those people out there who aspire to be deeper free divers? And maybe we've covered this topic already in the conversation to some extent. But what do you think the biggest mistakes are that are stopping these deep free divers in there? Mm. Uh, wh- what are the mistakes they're making again and again that you see being surrounded by people training? Like, um, yeah, what's the main the main things? Well. You know, it's good, it's important to be motivated, to be disciplined, to be um, committed. Um, but this can very quickly change into obsession, which is never good mm-hmm. in life in general. So kind of you need to find a balance. We, I think we covered this topic probably during the talk. Um, it's good, it's important to be committed, but you also need to be chilled and relaxed. And um, this is something that I would really apply to, to free divers, to people in general. Um, treat yourself sometimes, as I said before. You know, it doesn't, I always make fun. You don't need to eat broccoli, you know, it's, you can treat yourself, okay? It's okay also to have a glass of wine before your training next day. It's fine, okay? Don't feel guilty about it though. It's very important. Um, so, yeah, uh, this, this, I see this tendency, it's quite strong in free diving. I don't know if it's in, in general in other sports, but in, in free diving, you can really fuck up because, as I said, when your nerve system is triggered, you go backward and you can just like, you know, you yeah. go backward. Yeah, because in, in another sport, like uh, sprinting, like even you could, uh, your mind can be such a mess, but you can still come onto the track. Yeah. Boom, you hear the gun and run as exactly. fast as you can. You still think, yeah. but, but it's just, you're just physical. firing muscles. Um, yeah, because it's so physical, yeah. but yeah. free diving is not. So, yeah, yeah. you need... And I think cli- climbing is similar as well because yep. it's, uh, you mm-hmm. know, you could be, you know, making a crucial move or need to make a crucial move. You need the confidence, you need the clarity, you need the, yeah. you know, a, a surety in yourself that you can do that and exactly. do it in a relaxed way. Yeah. And it's a long process. It's a long process. So don't expect results... Uh, try not to to have expectations um, because you know the moment we put these expectations on ourselves we just really makes it harder mm. and uh, as they say very often try to enjoy the process you know try to be aware of, of your life and not only free diving for God's sake you know you need to think also life is much more than just free diving and uh, that's that's that goes that's related with the with this obsession. Um, so I think if you have, you know, if you're more chill, but in the same time committed, I think this this is a good balance. Um, yeah, I I think I guess this is this is uh, the 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 most the most often I see this this problem and the recovery of obviously goes with that, you know, because if you are let's say. Well, I like to call this. I like to use this word. If you're obsessed, let's say, then you don't have uh, you don't have the let's say you don't listen to your internal compass. Uh, you don't listen to your inner voice that is telling you you need to chill out. You need to rest. You need to rest an extra day. One day is not enough. Take three days. Yes, three days off is totally fine. You will not lose anything. It's also a very common question. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and uh, yeah, basically living life, yeah, living life, yeah. being present, being mm-hmm. grateful that we are now here, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just took three days off from training. I thought I was going to be have to have to redo my uh, Ida two again uh, after that, but uh, no, actually. No, yeah. but no. <laughs> but this is. But you know, but it's, it's, that's what you think, especially when you're like you, the g- you're doing gym and stuff like that, and you miss like I think I didn't do the gym for like one week, but uh, but fine. actually I went to the water today. I probably had the best dive session I've had for May like a month. See? So, um, May you see? But it's, it's also fine, man. Look, this is also when I said before. Um, I see some people are like diving deep uh, basically the whole year long or I don't know they are not 
diving for a really long time and then they come finally in the sea mm -hmm. and then they go boom straight yeah. to deep diving you yeah, know yeah. Uh, come on chill yeah. out uh, it's okay <laughs> I, I, and uh, how important do you think a training plan is like the, to, to, to enable it to be flexible but I see a lot of people who to talk about training they do training but they don't have a plan so mm -hmm. th they ten I think they tend to think very short term and jump in the water and try and do the deepest dives that they can every day and then repeat 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 for weeks and weeks on end so a, a training plan is important right it's super important you need to have some kind of structure yeah. you also need to log your trainings yep. you need to if you don't have any background in sport especially you need to find for help you need to ask a coach and to find a coach uh, this is all important, but this is now. It, it depends on which level you are, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you if you're more interested in, in improving and you want to commit uh, and invest a lot of time and energy into improving in free diving, then it makes sense to have some kind of uh, structure and uh, maybe some like a mentor or a coach or somebody mm -hmm. né, that can uh, help you here a bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. For sure, there are other things that I would definitely co uh, rec recommend, no? but I think maybe I, I covered maybe the main one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is also, uh, by the way, uh, I can also mention because it's it's I mentioned it before, and for me it's super important is the the purpose. Nah? It's important to know to know the reason why we do what we do. Um, to have bigger purpose means basically doing things that are coming that are aligned with you that are aligned with your purpose with your life with who you are with 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 your path with what you're supposed to do with what you're supposed to be with your own personal development and not coming from outside reasons this is what people are in general we are all doing and uh, it's a shame and i think we are really losing uh, a lot of beautiful moments mm -hmm. and uh, maybe we, maybe in general we would be more successful mm -hmm. if we were all mm -hmm. actually following our path and not mm -hmm. behaving uh, out of uh, expectations from the society and what we think is good, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So aiming for this mm -hmm. gold uh, whatever uh, record and then at the end of the day feeling like mm -hmm. shit, I mean... Do you, do you think that also is has something to do with... Um, age and uh maybe that's why they're not uh we don't see so many uh uh deep uh 25 year old uh free divers is that coming to to move a little bit from the material uh side of things into the deeper dimension of one's life and and f d realizing that you need a purpose to to be happy uh is something yeah. that comes a little bit later on for a lot of people perhaps i think maturity definitely is uh is a big um is a big um gift if we talk about free diving definitely it it comes very very useful uh, maturity absolutely um i don't know maybe the reason why there are not so many young free divers still in our sport is because it's so young the sport itself and there is no again no education no clubs no schools really for uh for 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 this sport uh it's not so much involved into the school system and so on so we will see maybe in the future it will change as the sport will changing but i think that again i think free diving is just so specific so unique so yeah. unique yeah. that um, and i'm sure also there are some other sports where actually age is is, is a bonus uh, mm -hmm. rather than a curse no mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean uh triathlon is a good example you know like you have these yep. people doing like one of the hardest things in the world yeah. like an iron man but why are they like sort of you know they're getting younger the top guys but you know it's like uh, people are peaking in the mid to late 30s you know like which yeah. is incredible considering yeah. the amount of volume and heavy impact they do but yeah. it requires such a huge amount of uh maturity to to no, not just technically how to pace yourself on a race that's seven or eight hours long where you're going at absolute full speed the whole time yeah. racing other people but also to to develop the mental endurance and uh and 
you know, stamina psychologically to be able to go through something like that. Yeah, resilience uh, also. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so let's, um, we'll, we'll, you know, there's one final question I want to ask you for the main part of the interview, but uh, let's quickly go through these Desert Ireland questions because I, there's been a few interviews since I've done these for the patrons, so um, uh-huh. I, I should reward them for supporting the show. Thank you very much to uh, Patreon supporters to... Uh, I've been supporting for years and uh, I love you all and a million thank yous for helping out. Um, Hey guys, just a little pause here to say thank you to the new Patreon supporters that have hopped on in the last two and a half months since I last did a standard episode of the Three Dive Cafe. That was one of the longest breaks between episodes. I'm sorry about that. Those of you who are desperate for new content, I was overwhelmed with building out the little blue and getting it ready for the season. But we should be back onto a bit of a more regular schedule now. So thanks to Morgan and Olga, both here in Dahab, Miguel, Adrian and Fano, And if I've missed anyone, I'm very, very sorry. Thank you so much for showing your love and supporting the show and enjoy today's episode. Visit patreon.com slash freedivecafe to sign up and let us know that you appreciate the work that I do here. Big love to you guys and dive safe. Okay, just um, one last question to take us out. You know, uh, traditionally on the podcast, I always ask uh, the the guest, um, why do they free dive? That's always the, the last question. And, you know, you answered that question last time, but I wonder if you can answer it again, but also reflecting on maybe how your philosophy of free diving has evolved over the last five years. And you make it very clear what your philosophy is as we have these discussions, but... Uh, yeah, why do you free dive? What, what you I would like to know, what did I answer back then? I can't remember. I never got that ah. far in the interview. No, I thought that maybe you have it uh, written. No, I'm not ah. as organized as that. I think, uh, actually, I wouldn't be surprised if the answer was actually the same as mm-hmm. today. I think at that time, probably, I was already having this... I, have, I was having this vision that I don't really have a clear vision. Um, and I'm totally fine with that. Uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, I, I believe that freediving happened to me. Um, it was meant to be. And uh, I always said that I believe that it was kind of a gift from life to me, a tool uh, to explore life, basically, you know. And, um, but I think I can answer maybe better to this question on that veranda when you know when we are going to be a bit older okay yeah okay. With, with a glass with a of, nice of glass good wine. wine nice okay yeah. well thank you very much thank you another fantastic talk this was a real pleasure nice. it nice. was so fun i hope uh, I we hope started off a little bit uh rough there yeah with what the was microphones going on? and the like, sun and everything it was like no argh. but it was like i had to be like this yeah, and then yeah, i had yeah, to yeah. be this and then i and had I to be like, like this God, like why did, why 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 is alenka have to be like completely motionless like why are you doing this to me with kate it was fine but now it's just like argh. he was like it's clipping it's clipping yeah, yeah. i was like i don't know what clipping <laughs> means but it's not good 